Good afternoon, uh, and welcome to Extreme Reporting. And we have a long list of things we want to get to today. Exactly. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Chuck. And let's see, change presenter, here we go. And you should be seeing Chuck's screen in just a moment. Excellent. All right. I believe we're there. I believe we're there. <clears throat> okay. Well, welcome aboard, everybody. And again, this is the final webinar in our five-part series on reporting. And we've called it Extreme Reporting. I don't know how extreme it's really going to be because uh, reporting is a Reporting really is a process. I mean, it's not something you land on. It's a, it's an ongoing learning uh, process. And hopefully you that have stayed with us have learned as you've moved along. And this will yet be another step in your continuing education. So what we're going to try to cover, and again, by way of assumptions, we are assuming that if you're at this stage in the reporting process that you have done basic modification and you're ready to start to move to the next level. And again, uh, whether after today you will be at the next level or not, um, probably not, maybe so, but we're going to introduce you to some components that you will be able to use, if not now, pretty soon, in making your reports do additional things. And uh, so we'll talk about just do it, just afters. We're going to review complex expressions, which really we kind of covered in the previous week's one. Uh, but talk about functions, because there are a whole range of functions that will be key to you as you begin to push the next level of reporting. Uh, variables and subtotals and totals, oh my, oh my, you know, we're counting and, and adding and summing is an important part of reporting, and we're going to touch on that. We want to make sure that you know about reports about reports, because again, if you're at this level, you're probably one of the system managers at your office, and there are some tools, there are some reports in the system that you can run that help give you the big picture about what's happening at your system. And this is kind of a, a little bit of candy here, but the PDF and HTML option, which is certainly uh, one of the options of outputting reports, which is, which is useful for you. OK, well, we're going to jump directly into it, guys, and talk about Just Do It. Um, the Just Do It is, as noted, a specialized function that basically uses SQL command language to be able to give you, as the designer of a report, the ability to manipulate the data, uh, basically extend what you're doing with the normal student manager report. You can change a sort order. You can use it to filter out unwanted data or add in additional data to use uh, in your cursor that you work with. You can execute specialized report functions. Uh, the grad spec, grad cred, stampion. There are a variety of report functions that a just do it can be implemented to call and again extend, expand, um, go beyond the normal routine of a report. <clears throat> the note to make it clear is that the just do it command will execute whatever you tell it before the re modify report is displayed or before the report template itself is displayed. And you'll note the little help command over here. <clears throat> As you might guess, there is help available. So from within the student manager main menu for the help guide, under report functions, um, you've got this special functions area where you'll see quite a bit of information in here about the Just Do It, examples, errors, uh, notes about both Just Do It's and Just Afters. OK, so what is a typical Just Do It? Well, this is the way it works. Let's go back to that. Um, and I need to get my pointer back again is that uh, it consists of the word just do it, a pair of parentheses, and then inside the just do it, you put in quotation marks the command that you wish to run. 
done or execute or make happen with the just do it. So we have here select zero stars marker from cursor five order by Kobeck date into cursor curse five. <clears throat> what this does is changes the order of records in a cursor. So uh, the only thing that actually functionally is changed in here is that you'll see the order by Kobeck date is what changes in the report that this just do it might apply to. So we'll now go on and look at some other examples of just do it's and what they are, well, the components of a just do it. Okay, well, what are elements of a just do it? Well, number one, you've got delimiters. Um, the just do it requires that the entire statement be placed inside a pair of brackets. Um, they can either be double quotes, single quotes, or open closed brackets. Uh, one of the bugs that you can run into in a just do it is mismatch brackets, and we'll cover that. Usually the select command is a standard verb to start a just do it. Asterisk indicates uh, that you want all of the data that follows, and there are ways that we won't be able to get into now, but that in the advance you could actually select partial fields or select just certain fields from different tables. Zero as marker is a condition that allows you to uh, shut off this just do it. In other words, when the zero as marker is in a just do it, that ends any further just do it's. So that if you are stacking just do it's, um, which is again advanced, you wouldn't want to add the zero as marker until the last just do it in the sequence. <clears throat> Again, this value as field name option stated here can be used to add a new field into your cursor, uh, which allows you to basically, again, add new components and make it part of your base reporting cursor. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to pause a bit, but talk about this idea of the cursor. And I guess we've got it referenced twice in this set of uh, components of a just do it. But that cursor five is a um, variable. It's a it's a uh, I guess you'd say convention that is used to describe the cursor or the data set that the report works on. Um, data reporting is basically done based on data that is returned to you by this by your query. And that data is stored in a cursor um, or a data element that we refer to as cursor 5. And as it's noted, that is the default cursor created when the report opens. So that the cursor 5 label is a standard element that we need to be aware of in, in, in working with just do it's. <clears throat> the where is a, a condition as to what must be met and is always followed by some value. Um, either a data condition or a variable or a, a formula here, do minus paid greater than uh, zero, zero, which is used in Deadbeat to show only those records that owe you money. Group by, that's an optional element of a just do it that allows you to group data together to eliminate duplicate rows. So if you had uh, multiple names listed within a roster, and you might want to have only one name per roster, you would use some group by element. Order by allows you to change the sort order. That was the very first example we showed you, but it's a way to change the way the data is displayed in the report. Uh, int cursor, cursor in, and again, typically, um, you will put that into, Lori, you're seeing my taskbar down at the bottom or not. I can't tell if that shows or not. Your taskbar does show at the bottom, yes. Okay, let me hide that for you. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so that um, the final statement places the data back where you found it, if you would, and m any changes that you then specify within the where or the condition or the group or the order is then put back into the, the cursor that the report system uses to display your data. Okay, now, um, we're going to go to the next step about where you put the just do it expression. Uh, but um, let me ask if there are any questions that have kind of popped up on the screen that you want to deal with now. No, nope, I think we're good to go. Okay. All right, so we're forging ahead. Um, you build a just
just do it by basically using the toolbar to, and I don't see it in this example, but it's the expression builder toolbar, the same one you'd add a, a uh, expression to, and we'll, <coughs> we'll show you that in a second. Uh, you can place it anywhere in the report. We do recommend putting it in the header just so that you kind of know where to look for when you're tracking it down. Um, it will, by default, does it by default does not print, so you don't have to worry about it showing up on the printed report. Um, and again, you'll note in this example we've colorized the Just Do It, so it kind of shows up when we're modifying the report to help us find it in a in a in a busy report. Okay, here are some more examples. <clears throat> Okay, if we wanted to change the sort order of the report uh, with an order by statement, we have done, you'll see the open close, open quote, close quote, again, the open parens, close parens, uh, select star, zero is marker, so this would be the last just do it run <coughs> from cursor five, which is our default data that we get back from the query. We change the order and then we put it back into cursor 5. Okay, how do we eliminate duplicate records? If we had a group of records in a report and we only wanted to show one record per name <coughs> and we had the name ID, which is a unique identifier, it's the ID number or the social number of the student, we would do a group by NMID <coughs> which would give us only one name per student. Filter a report. This is again that example earlier, <clears throat> for instance, in Deadbeat, where we might want to show only people who owe money, where we're going to make the condition is that only show me records of all the records that the query would bring back where the balance due is greater than zero. Total due minus paid is greater than zero. Uh, this is an option that is kind of a double duty we're adding a data field to the cursor and then we're ordering by it. So this would be a report where we want to add the begin date of the class <clears throat> into the cursor. We're going to call the field date and we'll actually use that field uh, to order the data uh, back into the cursor. So we've added a field on the fly, if you would, which is field as a value uh, there will be a field in the cursor then called date, and you can order on that. All right. Um, let's see what is next here. <clears throat> oh, the note that when you're doing order by or group by, if you're using multiple fields to do the grouping, uh, you separate those by a comma. <clears throat> so you can do multiple fields uh, to um, to order this by. Okay. Chuck, we do have one quick question that this might be a good spot for. Is it always cursor five? The when you start with the cursor in a report, yes, it always is cursor five is the default uh, data element that you have as the foundation data in a report. So yes, you always start with cursor five. <clears throat> if you're running, if you're wanting to get data from the query information that you used, there is an example when we're using uh, the complete, my uh, example of in the past of the MASH cross out machine gun writing incubator option, <clears throat> where we're basically commandeering a report and using the report for an entire different purpose. You can use a just do it to grab data from completely different tables and return into uh, the report area you're working with. <clears throat> but that's, that's pretty extreme. Most of the time when you're modifying a report where you're really where you want to be, you're going to start with cursor five. All righty. Kind of help? Yep. Yeah. And if you are eliminating records from your list, you always use the where statement. Well, the uh, again, the where statement is a condition. Okay, where is, in essence, a another.
another way, it's kind of like an internal query inside this uh, Just Do It. The where command will do that. There are some functions that will provide conditional reporting <coughs> that could be used. And we'll talk about that in a bit with uh, some functions. Uh, but um, yeah, normally the where command is certainly one of the ways you can embed, if you would, a secondary filter or select or criteria to eliminate records uh, within uh, the data you're bringing back from, from the query. How are we doing? We're doing pretty good. All right, let's kind of push on. And, and we're going to get into manager and actually open up the box in a second. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to some examples. Tips and notes, and, and again, uh, the spelling or case, uppercase just do it, lowercase just do it. <clears throat> They're the same thing. You don't have to worry about proper case or lowercase on the just do it. Now, a note, uh, mm, a year and a half or two years ago, we did have a couple of reporting areas where the just do it had to be entered in uppercase or lowercase. I believe we now have that so that a case doesn't make any difference. <clears throat> you do need to mind your quotes, your close quotes, and uh, end quotes and all. You need to match the brackets when you're working with a Just Do It. <clears throat> when you're editing a Just Do It, or when you're adding a Just Do It to a report, um, you can't see the changes immediately. You have to save your Just Do It, close it, and then rerun the report in order to see what that Just Do It does. So it's not a dynamic. When you're editing, you have to save, close, redo. Recovering from a failed just do it. Uh, sometimes you build the just do it and it blows up in your face and you basically can't uh, get to where you can save the report. Uh, there is a way to recover from that and uh, if we have time, we'll, and if someone cares, we'll go back and cover that. that that's, again, normally one of these check with the professional options. Again, you can stack just do it's. Uh, there are examples where we might have several just do it stacked. Um, that is where each just do it builds on the previous one to help you get to uh, your desired results. Going where mere mortals fear to tread. And again, when in doubt, check with the professional. Uh, we, you're certainly uh, free to experiment with just do it's. Um, and again, in reports, as long as you stay away from some of the stamp value functions, you can play with the inside of a report and not fear breaking anything. Uh, but in order to make sure the results are getting what you need, uh, we invite you to copy your Just Do It to an email, mail it to your tech, and get them to give you an a, a evaluation of it or at least some thoughts on it uh, if you're a little nervous. How are we doing on the questions, Lori? I think we're doing very well. Anything? All right. Uh, let's go next here. Again, uh, the reference guide. We've talked about. <clears throat> we've talked about the reference guide, uh, the help guide, as far as the Just Do It component. <clears throat> the little notes here tell me that I want to ask a poll question at this point. So the, that's the vote tool down here. So, Lori, if you, I think we have a poll question about Just Do It. We sure do. We would like to know if you have ever tried a Just Do It. And we give you some options here. Um, tried to be <laughs> realistic. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's right. <clears throat> We're, we'll let you be honest here. And again, if you're in a group, uh, you can pick your most advanced user there and let them... Uh, let them show off for us here. Yeah. Looks like, I, I, I think guess we're going to be pleased with the poll, Chuck. It looks like everybody has at least, or, or about half have tr at least tried it. So Very good. Very good. Even <coughs> another minute or, or a couple of seconds to just couple tally seconds, up. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Let's go ahead and close the poll. And I'll show you the results. It's fairly even, but that's that's pretty good. I'm impressed. Well, that's good, guys. I think I think you're doing good on that. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead now and jump to 
Oh, not great. I did start manager. Hang on a second. I'm going to need to fire up our student manager demo here. Chuck, while that's happening, I have someone uh -huh. reporting that they're having trouble with the sound, that they're hearing a woman's voice in the background. If anybody else is hearing that, if you could kind of let me know so that I can... Um, now, that's interesting. I'm not hearing... Oh, that's Cheryl in the background, I'm guessing. So I'm afraid she's, you know, I don't... We're, we're sharing the office up here. And... Yeah, it doesn't. It just seems to be a, a localized problem, and that's good. Alrighty, thank you. Okay, and and again, Cheryl is up here behind me chatting, and so we might have a little bit of Cheryl going on here. Okay, um, just do it. So let's go ahead and uh, look at my favorite reporting area, Deadbeat. I'm going to modify, and we'll pull a query for course number equals 07. And I'll answer yes to the show me the money. Okay. I have a report that I've already created called Extreme Report. A little tip for you, and this is back to the uh, query building stage. You'll note that the word extreme in the, in the, uh, in the this is actually a renaming reports. Uh, the, the extreme report, even though it begins with an X, it's sorted at the top of the list. Well, when you name a user-defined report, if you put in a blank space at the beginning of the report, it will sort alphabetically at the top of your list. So you don't have to you don't have to go down and find it alphabetically down at the bottom. And I think Lori, in your days, you actually used to actually put an explicit number one, two, three as a preface to a report. We did. So you kind of knew you could just tell the users click on report. And you knew they would have that report. Yep, yep. That made it easier for everybody. Okay, so I'm going to look at our extreme roster. It already has a just do it in it. But again, for those of you, again, that kind of new here, you would add a just do it by using the AB field, you know, to create a field box and the report expression tool. Uh, I'm going to double click on this expression. And now we can look at an example of a just do it. And it's actually, you can see the blue, can't you, Lori? We can. Okay. Uh, the idea that that kind of indicates kind of verbs within the SQL command sequence. So select is a, is a verb as, zero is marker, from, order by, and then what to do, put it into a cursor. So those are kind of action items that this just do it does. You'll note again it has the opening quote or the opening bracket close parentheses I should say parens parens opening quote close quote and then we have the command inside here. <clears throat> and again because we don't really need it printed we can actually stack this off to the side and it'll still run. You don't have to worry about sizing it to see it. As long as it's in the report, it will run. I've expanded it so we can look at it as we're studying this. <clears throat> okay, so what has this just do it done? Well, this orders the report by course number, the add date, and then the name of the student. Well, let's take a look at that. So we'll preview. We'll go to File, Preview. <clears throat> so what this does, it sorts the roster, and it's a deadbeat report set up in a roster format, which means we sort by the course first, and then inside the course, but we sort by add date. So this would show us the order in which people registered, two, four, you know, February, April, May, June, July, August, when people registered for that particular class. And you'll note the names, A-H-N-D-S, it's not alphabetical by name. Uh, so let's say, well, let's make it so that we it is alphabetical by name. We don't care about the ad date. So we're going to remove the ad date. Actually, we won't remove it. Let's edit it, and we'll say sort by name. And now we're going to edit the just do it by double-clicking on it. We'll 
so we can view the entire routine. And in order to sort this by name, I'm going to remove one of the fields in this group of four fields. Which field, I'm going to ask, which field should I remove to have it sort by the course number and then the name? <clears throat> I'll wait for 30 seconds to see if someone can shout that out by clicking in your chat window and writing in a field name. Ah, uh, the answer we have a winner. to pour in. We do. And that was who? Uh, Lindsay came in first with Red Very good. Eight. Excellent. And the field is ad date. So we're going to remove the ad date so that we'll sort by the course and then alphabetically last name. And then we're going to also sort by the first name. So again, if we were to use last name only, we might have Smith, John, Smith, Adam, Smith, Zedediah, Smith, Bill. But by adding the first name, then at least we'll have Smith, Adam, Smith, Bill, Smith, Jones, etc. All right. And we'll save that. Close. Yes, we'll save it. Extreme roster, and we're going to put by, by name. Now explain why you can't just preview it again. Well, because the zero as marker has already run, when you are in modify mode and you have a just do it, it has already done its work before you get to the modify. So it's like a single shot. Uh, if you're a if you're a target, if you if you hunt or target practice, you know it's a single shot. Once you've gotten to the registration report, you've already fired your weapon and you have to go back and reload. So <clears throat> it basically means you've got to rerun the report uh, the next time to see what it'll do. And if you look at this, you'll note my sort order is still the same as when I previewed it in, uh, in edit mode. Close it, no. I'm going to go back and this time I'm going to be smart. I'm going to click recycle report modify and additional. We'll do course number begins, repeat our value, show me the money, <clears throat> and now we've got our extreme roster by name. Now let's see guys if we've got any action. Well look at that. We now have a very nice order alphabetical by name, which is what we told it do. I like it when it does what we say. Um, okay, um, I'm going to <clears throat> get into, um, we'll, we'll leave this up and let's go back to our session. Any questions, Lori, popping up relevant right now that we want to hit? Yeah. Explain why the answer was not co-course, please. Well, uh, the, if we reduce, well, okay, now now that's uh, legitimate. If we wanted to sort the names alphabetically across every record that we've got, we would have taken out co-course. But we wanted this per class. If, if we took out co-course, we would have an alphabetical list of every student who took a class in 2007. <clears throat> if we really wanted a roster-level report, we... We want to sort by the course first and then alphabetical, excuse me, within the course. But again, uh, it depends on what you want. This is, if you would, a course roster report and we're sorting inside the course. So here's the group header, that's primary sort. And then inside the group header is where the sort was we were working with. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. Now we're going to get back to our routine here. Um, the idea that you've got the help, uh, we've done that. Where can you go from here for just do it? And we'll get back to this, but again, any book that you might find that has to do with SQL, SQL for Dummies, there is such a book in the Dummy series, <coughs> will help you. If you Google Learning SQL, you'll find two or three sites that are free um, SQL learning um, uh, sites. And again, uh, those would all help you as you learn to do just this. OK, 
Okay, let's talk about just afters. The just after is syntactically, I love that, it's organized like a just do it, only it executes whatever is inside it after the report runs. <clears throat> again, it's a non-printing element. Um, I recommend you can put it anywhere. Again, I recommend putting it in the footer or in the summary band just to kind of know that it remind you that it happens after everything else is done. <clears throat> and it's typically used if you're using a stamp valve. You can use it to extract fields to an external file or execute some specialized functions. And uh, we're not, we don't have a poll question to ask if you use just afters, but here are a couple examples. Just after confirm, which uses the confirm function. Actually, these all call. Fun Normally, you're going to call a function with the just after. <clears throat> confirm allows you to log a confirmation date into the RG confirm field. Uh, name exp is a function that lets you export name and address data. Um, quote do email will launch the email wizard after the report. And again, stamp value functions. What are stamp value functions? Well, some of the stamp value functions are, I lost my pointer here. I managed to pick blue. Concert, which is the one about uh, stamping a certificate, and there's confirm. Stamp name, which allows you to stamp a value in a name record stamp interest where you can stamp an interest code. Um, again, <clears throat> a variety of ways that you can um, add a value to a report. I, I'm going to ask if anybody has used, and this is a shout out question, has anybody used a uh, stamp uh, or uh, a just after with a stamp value of any kind with or without tech help? Go ahead and give me a shout out on that. Click into your text and, and just say yes or no. Um, and then we'll kind of let, let people get some feedback on that. So far, I have a single yes. Oh, there's another okay. one. Okay. And probably 10 or 12 no's. Okay. Well, a, again, a, it, the stamp values are kind of uh, useful in that you can actually add, um, you can add a value to the database based on information in your in your um, in your report, and um, I guess uh, I'm not sure I want to take the time to do it here, but the idea is, well, let's go ahead and close this. Let me show you an example, an interest code. If for some reason you decided after the fact that you wanted to create an interest code. I'm going to see if I have a stamp int value here, and we'll just make one. Uh, let's say that I've got a group of classes here, and I want to run a deadbeat report for everybody where the location has a particular value, the Nebraska Center. And I wanted to send a mailing to everybody uh, I wanted to stamp an interest code to people who attended classes at the Nebraska Center. <clears throat> so I'm going to get a list of names of all the registrations that came to the Nebraska Center. The stamp with a just after, just after open quote quote, stamp int. Okay, and that's a function and Let's talk about functions now. The report function area, and again, I'm in the help guide, I'm in student manager, report functions. <clears throat> I'm going to have the entire list. One of the new things that Cheryl has done, which is very nice in the newest version of help, is that she has a section called function description by function by categories, ad field, budget, codes, counting, courses, data export, data stamping. Well, there is stamp int. And what this lets you do is to stamp or remove an interest code from all names in a report. 
support. So this gives you a mass way of assigning interest codes to people if you can get them into a uh, report. And we're going to see, I didn't put in a value in this parameter, and we'll see if it'll let me do one on the fly. I'm not going to put in a value inside that. We'll save it. Yes. I'm going to give it stamp val test. Okay, now, unlike a just do it, a just after, if you've modified it, you will get to test it when you leave the report. Send it to the printer. Here goes a test. And it did not like that. Let's try that again. Modify report. Course number begins. Oh, we want uh, location contains text. Sh Alt or Shift F2 repeats. Oops. Alt F2 repeats the previous value that I've entered. Stamp file test. Stamp int and apparently not. Quote uh, N E B C E N T. Okay, now here's where I'm already making a mistake. What is my problem, guys? Some of you eagle-eyed people, tell me in two words what my problem is. And it has to do with what? It has to do with what? What is the symbol that I have in there wrong? Counting one, counting twice. Who's first? Uh, Michelle is first, and she comes back with quotes. Quotes are mismatched. I'm using the same quote twice. You can't do that. I have a double quote here and a double quote here and a double quote and a double quote. That will not fly. You've got to use alternate quotes. So I either have to use a single quote or a bracket on the inside set of quotation marks. Just after, stamp int, file close, yes, swap file test. Close, no. And here is my uh, just after stamp out. <clears throat> do I want to assign this to all main records in this report? Yes, I do. And it added 38 codes. And the question is, is whether or not, and it did. And there's my new code, NEBSENT22808. Okay, let's kind of get back to the shoe here. Uh, the report description, we've showed you that. And again, functions. Uh, I am, the functions were created to help you guys use things in reports um, that basically extend ways of doing things. Here are some of my favorites, and, and there, are, there are literally hundreds of, of functions. Count it lets you jump outside your report to count anything. Trim date is great if you're trying to put a date in and save space on uh, horizontal report. Wasis stamps the query on the header of the report so you know what your query was. The namer, my favorite, show phone format. Quick code. This allows you to see what the description of, of a code field. And again, remember, all of these are in the help file. So you can go in here and see what they how, what exactly they're going to do. We're, we're going I'm gonna have to stay moving along here. <clears throat> Quick instructor displays the first instructor on a course. The inline if statement: if IIF parens a condition, what to show if 
Mr. Chef, <clears throat> master your ingredients. Think of your function list as the seasonings <clears throat> or the spices in a cooking cabinet. Uh, you can have a pretty dull meal if you don't use any spices. You use spices appropriately and you can make yourself some gourmet stuff. Okay, I'm going to pause a second and see if there are questions popping up that you want to address. Not so far. We're out of time, I think. Yeah, I think we've been keeping up with them so far. I'm sorry? I think we've been keeping up with the questions so far. Good enough. Okay. <coughs> variables. Um, again, we're going to look at variables on this report. And the variables are used to hold data. They aren't saved to the database unless you have a stamp valve. And again, you can actually use the stamp valve to, to store a variable to a database. And again, the variable, so it's really temporary. So think of it as, if you would, a data bucket that you're able to store stuff in for the report purposes. Uh, you can get record counts in a report, <coughs> uh, generate numbered lists, uh, use it away for calculation, um, and you can use shorthand expressions of a long function. Uh, again, come up with uh, mathematical totals. Uh, do mathematics on a set of variables inside the report. To create a variable, you'll go to the report in modify, report variables. You can assign a name to the variable. You have an initial value. <coughs> release the variable after the report. And again, because we really clear all this, this is kind of irrelevant here. But then you can specify whether this variable is reset at what particular stage in the report. And I lost my mouse. Um, and then you have the option to do variable calculations. So let's go in and, and look at something that we can actually get our teeth into here. We'll go back to our the report we just modified here. Extreme roster by name. <clears throat> so we have here a report. It shows us the due and the paid, and we have a subtotal at the bottom. And we also have a variable here. Well, let's see what we're doing. CRS count is a variable, and if we go to the menu reports, variables, we see it right there. So what does CRS count do? It is, it looks at this value and it counts it. <clears throat> so what, what you can think of is that as we're going through these names, and again they're sorted by course number and then alphabetical within course, in the group footer, and so where the variable exists here, in the group footer, we have actually counted how many names there are within this course number, and it should give us the total. Well, we look at that, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. Okay, our math is good. <clears throat> um, here we have the word do and the word do. Now, why is this one different than this one? Well, let's look at this variable and we'll look at its calculations. <clears throat> Nothing is calculated right here. Okay? We'll look at this, <clears throat> and we says, wait a minute, we're going to sum this, and we're going to reset the value of this when the course number changes. And that's why this variable at the bottom is a sum of all the individual values of the total due for the individual students. <clears throat> and there is paid and the same variable exists there. Now if we wanted the balance due of these, we could create a variable at this level that would be the due minus the paid. So we're going to do that, DUE minus paid. Made an, it's actually an expression using two variables. I guess I should use my terminology correctly.
change the color to red so that it shows. All right. Now, uh, for you advanced report writers, um, I see zeros there, and that's kind of confusing. How could I not show the zero for those with no balance due? Somebody give me a shout out. What would be the condition or button that I would push if I want this to not show if it's zero? First one, Lori. Well, I'm here. Are you there? I'm there, yep. <coughs> I lost it there for a minute. Okay. Uh, I, I asked people to shout out what the what I do to conditionally display that. Thank you. That's what I needed to know. And they were right with the print when and Marshall. Print when. when. So we go to print when and we would say only print when due minus paid is not equal to zero. And now we look at that and voila, we only show the value when it is greater than zero. <clears throat> and again, you could get fancy and you could say only show the due minus paid if the due is greater than zero. And we might want to say if they have a credit on file, we would show it in green if it is a credit. And we don't have any, so we're not going to do that. Um, okay, let's look at another way to create a variable. Let's watch the fee description field, and I'll give you... I'll right mouse click and go to properties, and we can do properties. Properties. Oh, I guess, okay, AJ was telling me, other way to do this, if you go, you click on the element and you go to format font, <coughs> you can change the color of it at that point. And we're going to make it blue. So we see reg fee, reg fee, reg fee, staff fee, registration fee. If we wanted to know per class how many people in this class paid a registration fee level versus a staff fee level, we could make a variable for that. <coughs> and we'll do that by going to report variables. And we'll make a new variable, insert a variable, and we'll call it uh, staff. Okay, that's the variable name. And what are we going to store? Well, we're going to store if <coughs> IIF, if the registration fee description equals staff, we're going to make it a 1, otherwise we're going to make it a 0. Okay? Now, that is using the if statement to test the condition, return 1 if it's true, 0 if it's false, and we want to sum those, and let's leave that, and, and we want, we need to reset it every time the course changes. So we'll now put in a variable here. And let's put a label for that. Staff fee. And we go down here and it says one. Well, let's go one, two, three, one. There's only one there. Well, let's make another one for uh, registration. <clears throat> and we'll make, and I'm making a label for clarity uh, to, for, to help my user know what it is. Report variables. Um, I'm going to copy this just to cheat copy that, insert a new one called regis, I'll paste it into the value, only I'm going to change the description. And again, because I only have one fee beginning with REGIS, <coughs> I can abbreviate and uh, get the same thing without as much work. <coughs> I'll
R-E-G-I-S. You have to remember the variable name. You, some things you can go down and find it in the list down here, but that, it used to be, it's a lot harder to find. There it is, R-E-G-I-S, it is. It's <clears throat> the very last variable um, before you start the underscore variable set. And we should have more of those. There are 10 in the standard registration fee. And I believe that's correct. So that is a way to deal with variables. And we are running out of time, so I'm going to try to get back. <clears throat> the report's about reports. We need to make sure you know this. I think we probably covered this a time or two before. <clears throat> but in the deadbeat area, there are a couple of reports that help you show what you have in your system as far as reports. And we're going to look at those because they also illustrate the creative use of Just Do It's. Uh, reports by frequency and reports by area. Um, so we're going to go, oh, we'll get back to that. We'll close this. We'll save that and we'll save those to this report. <clears throat> and I'm back to my favorite deadbeat. We'll modify, we'll uh, recycle the report. Now, in this following example, what I use for a query is completely irrelevant. So I can answer no, as long as I get one record to show up. So the asterisk ones, all queries, reports by area, reports by frequency, or the one that I think is probably the best general purpose, new all reports with memo, basically have nothing to do with deadbeat data. They have to do with <coughs> reports. And, all right, so this shows us our inventory of all the reports in the system. And you'll note it has four stacked just do -its. And again, it's basically doing a rather complex query or a select <coughs> where we're pulling data out of the reports field and was stacking them into temporary cursors. That was cursor three, this was cursor four, this is cursor five, <clears throat> and then we finalized the cursor in terms of the order. But that's basically a very advanced query but using different ways to stack and organize <clears throat> to recreate a report. Uh, so you really can break the rules, if you would, in, in uh, the, normal rep the normal report sequence, and <clears throat> you just need a place to store those, and so, of course, my favorite area is deadbeat, and that's where I have a lot, a lot of these stacked. Okay, we've got a couple more items, and then we're going to try to get some questions here and get back to what we're about. <clears throat> Outputting as PDF, and again, I think most people have done this. Um, the main thing to that I really want to specify here is that you've got to be aware of where it is that you're storing your, your data here. And again, my recommendation is that you save your output file to some folder other than the student manager just because of not having junk stacked in your student manager folder. <clears throat> and um, if you're doing HTML, it creates an HTML page mode. <clears throat> and if you're shipping that to other people, you do need to send the uh, next, and these are basically the display elements that are the forward, next, back, so that the viewer or the person who gets it is going to be able to see those. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that example because we're, we're getting out. I want to save some time for questions. But we've really flown through the components of, uh, of Just Do It's. A little more time on that just after us. We've, we've covered functions, and I've really emphasized that to really master reporting or to do it the easy way, learn those functions. Uh, they can help you. Covered variables, our reports about reports, and our output for PDF. So at this point, let's try to see if we can answer some questions before people's brains explode here. All righty. And Lori, you're going to have to pick and choose. We'll take about five minutes, so we'll run an extra five minutes or so. I actually
actually don't have any questions at the moment. So wow. We have to, to hold on. Well, let me ask um, back to um, PDF export if anybody has ha anybody has questions about the PDF that they wanted to see an example of that, um, or if somebody had variable questions. <clears throat> Again, I, I go back to one of my uh, recommendations earlier, and that is. If you're wanting to learn reporting, uh, go into Modify and just basically look at how things were built. So if I wanted to see another report using a series of just do it, um, I'm going to look at the Half-Life report and Deadbeat, and I believe that uses a just do it, Half-Life report. Comma, 
function would add the number taken into this field, or into this cursor, as the field called taken. If I wanted to order this by the number taken so that I would have the, the most, uh, the people with the most classes showing up at the top of the list, we of course have to have the add name is taken before you put the order by. <clears throat> but again, that, that, you know, in terms of the sequence, otherwise within the, from the from to the into, the order in between here can be moved back and forth. That was a long question, but uh, again, if you go back to your SQL, if you go back to SQL rules, uh, I think you'll see that that um, would be indicated in there. It's, it's pretty forgiving as far as the order you put things in, in between. Other questions? Otherwise, I think we might want to <clears throat> close off to respect people's uh, time here. So You have two questions, and I think you okay. can answer them both very quickly. Uh, you had said that if you wanted to put the name of a report or a report at the top of the list, if you named it with a space at the very beginning of the name, it would pop up Correct. at the very top? Right. Does that work for variables? Uh, no. Variables, actually, no. And, and that's a, uh, the, the answer to it is no. And the, the issue is you have to be aware, if you're talking about variables, variables are, are put in the order that you put them. Now, you can drag them around and move them, but they're basically wherever you drop them. Uh, one of the things you've got to be aware of is that sometimes you have one variable depending on another variable. Variables are processed in the order that they appear down the list. So in other words, the count 05 variable is processed then the money variable is processed. So this, the order matters, but it's not automatic. You are in charge of how you set the order of that. Okay, there's one. Okay, and Susan would like to know why in the report, in the money column, she's seeing asterisks. Oh, that is because um, the field is the field is too small to accommodate the number of spaces that the data exists in. So an asterisk is a numeric overflow indication. And so if I take a look at this, the money part, you'll see I have 999.99. Either I have the field is too narrow, and I'll widen this field, And it's still not wide enough. Oh seven. Did I get oh I did the wrong field. Sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> when I widen that field, and that wasn't a matter there were two things that could happen here, Susan. One is that my number of digits that I displayed, I don't have enough digits to display the number, or the physical size of the box is too small. So I could take any one of these other numbers, narrow it up a bit, and what we'll see, well actually that was an even 10, so it still showed it. <clears throat> but um, the, the width of the box or the number of digits in between. Okay, well uh, folks, thank you so much for your interest. You guys have hung around. We're going to close this off now. Um, let me remind you again that we do have a, a general purpose, kind of a general info one on ACEWeb next Thursday at 2 p.m., not 1, but 2 p.m. And so uh, we'd look forward to seeing you there, whether you're new to ACEWeb or have, don't have ACEWeb yet. Uh, give you a good opportunity to learn about it. We are hopefully taping this session, and it'll be available for rerun for you. And um, watch, we'll be getting a new set of web programs up on the disk for you to look shortly. And Lori, thanks again for your help. No problem. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>